have to wear striped or checked shirts with this. Not like when I look, especially if I move a little bit, it's like an optical illusion. I get all these lines That's moving. Why people on backstage shouldn't wear striped shirts either. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I haven't noticed that. And I don't know, I'll have to look on the video today to see if this, this is. I hope it, does, it isn't disturbing for, for anyone, <laughs> anyone to see that. I do, you know, I do remember this. Um, when when uh, they they first trained us on this, they said uh, you know to to typically solid colors are the best. They they mentioned a few colors that didn't work really good either. But um, one thing I demand to do is turn off the lights. Maybe that will help the instructor light. With those lights on, I feel like I'm being interrogated. <laughs> you know, it's like they're right right in my face. Anyhow. Um, today we're talking about the design for the project and we talked about the number of phases that you're going to go through and I think I mentioned the phases but we didn't go into too much in depth. We really talked about the one phase and in a way it's, it's, it's I hesitate to say the most important phase but it's one of those phases that if you don't get right like it's the foundation and everything's going to crumble underneath of it. Uh, there's a very famous graph in software development that shows, and this has been true since the first software was developed. And what it does is it graphs how expensive it is to make a change to a project as far as uh, compared to the stage of the project that you have to make the change. So let me draw the graph here. Generally speaking, people talk about analysis. That's when you're gathering information and design. That's when you're planning a solution and building the project and testing it and then finally implementing the project. And the graph looks like this. In other words, the further you go on on, the, on on a project, it not only gets more expensive, it gets more expensive faster. All right. For those of you that like mathematics, that has a positive first derivative, which means it's increasing at an increasing rate. So it's not simply increasing like this. It's increasing, it's skyrocketing. And the best analogy I can think of is compared to building a house. All right. If you were building a house and you decided that um, you know you wanted uh, a room to be um, 12 feet by 12 feet, all right. If the architect, let's say you hired an architect, you know you hit the lottery and all that, so you're building your dream house. But if you told the architect, well, no, I don't want it 12 by 12. I want it 16 by 16. If the architect is still sketching out the house on, on paper and all that, it's going to add some expense. The architect's going to have to revise the plans and there'll be more materials and all that. So it's going to be more expensive. But imagine if you finished building the house and then you decided, I want this room to be 16 by 16, not 12 by 12, right? The expense would skyrocket. Not just in terms of the materials, but you'd have to tear down stuff and, you know, and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Not to mention the inconvenience to your family and, and all that. So the idea is, is when you're planning something out, it's, it's kind of easy to change it. After you've already built something, it's kind of hard to change it. So we want to make sure we spend a lot of time planning our site so that hopefully we're on the right track and we don't have to go back and figure something out uh, and change it. All right. So changes like, gee, I want this to be a different color of green, well, that's not that big of a deal to change. But fundamental changes like, gee, we targeted the wrong group of customers, that's a big deal. And that's going to take a lot to change, and it's going to take a lot to fix, and it's going to be very costly. So the first phase is called the strategy phase. And in the strategy phase, you try to identify the goals. So first of all, you state the purpose of the site. 
You identify goals, and the goals exist both for whoever's making the site and whoever's visiting the site. And finally, you come up with personas. And personas are descriptions of groups of visitors. So let's go through an example. Let's say I am a local band or I'm part of a local band, or I'm developing a website for a local band. All right? And let's come up with a strategy section. Let's say classic rock band plays the local bars, you know, maybe has a CD out on Bandcamp or something that you can buy. All right? The strategy might be that You know, our band, or, or that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make a site for our band, that's going to. Make a site for our band that is a band that plays in Northeast Ohio. And we play bars and clubs. Notice how when we stated it, I didn't just say a site for our band. I got a little more specific in, in giving the purpose of the site. We're not, you know, we're not a band that tours the world. We're not a band that plays arenas. We're a band that plays clubs and bars and we're local to Northeast Ohio. Alright? So, this already gives us an idea of who our audience is, right? Am I going to be doing things that, am I going to be targeting high school kids? No, because they can't get in the bars and clubs for the most part, right? All right. Um, am I going to be targeting, you know, people in New York or on the West Coast? No, because we don't play there. Now again, you know, you might get some CD sales, so you're not going to ignore those people completely, but that's not necessarily your target audience. What I'm trying to get at this is we went beyond simply saying I'm making a site about our band. And we talked a little bit about the, the purpose of the site. The site is geared towards a band that plays bars and clubs in Northeast Ohio. So that gives us a better idea. Now, what are some of the goals of this site from the point of view of the band? So I'll say band goals or organization goals or whatever. What are some of the goals that the band might have. Could be sell CDs. Get new fans. Drink a lot of beer. <laughs> that would be, that would be, uh, that, that very likely is a goal, but it's probably not a goal of the website. All right. <laughs> uh, get bookings. Excellent. All right. Um, I'm going to rephrase that just a little bit. Um, and I'm going to say, um,
support current fans. I don't know if I like the word support there, but I can't think of a better word. But that would include things like published show dates and so on and so forth. So, I mean, if you think about it, um, these are reasonable things. Getting more people to like you. Keep your current fans happy. All right? I guess maybe that's a better way to say it than support current fans. Get new jobs and maybe sell stuff. All right? Those are great goals to have and those are great goals to identify. All right? And I would think that that would be um, probably um, for any band, except, you know, maybe if a band was so popular that they didn't need to seek out bookings, maybe one of these things, maybe getting bookings wouldn't be a goal. But a local band, I find it hard to believe that any local band wouldn't be seeking bookings. Like, likewise, um, you know, I don't think there's too many bands that will say, you know what, we're happy with our 150 fans. You know, we don't want to get 300 fans and let the success, success go to our heads and start riding around in limos and stuff and drinking champagne and, and our music suffer for, uh, from it, you know, right? And again, selling CDs, a given band might not have C a CD published uh, or, or uh, created, so maybe that wouldn't be a goal for an individual band. But again, these are pretty solid goals, all right? Before I de identify the... the, the the, the goals for the site visitors, let's consider some personas. So let's make up some fictional people that might be visiting the site. And we're going to go the whole nine yards, as they say. When you do the project, get a picture of someone that's meant to represent them. You know, go to Flickr, you know, pick your friends out, you know, take their Facebook profile pictures if you want, uh, anything. The idea is to make these people seem real to you because then you can put yourself in their shoes and say, what is this person going to really want out of this site? So, who are some personas? Who are some groups of people that might be visiting a band's website? College students. College students? Okay. And why might they be visiting a band's website? Okay. And that, in a way, that almost could be two different um, um, things. One, maybe people that, and let's, let's just take some notes here, and then we'll come up with our personas. People that maybe heard about the band. One, people that already know that they like the band's music. Because these people might be looking for different things on the site. One of them might be interested but not convinced. But the other one might be convinced that I like this band. It's another group of people, college students or otherwise. Retirees. Retirees, okay. Oh, okay. Classic rock. Um, I'm trying to decide just exactly how much I'm offended by that, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I, I have a thick skin. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not bothered uh, much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and what might they be looking for? Um, different events they can go to. All right. Time. People looking for things to do. Gee, I am free on Friday. My pension check just came in. So I want to I want a night out on the town. All right. What's well, better to re, to relive my glory years, you know, than listening to some Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, etc. So, I might go and see that the whoever these band is is playing at a local club. Gee, would I like them? So you go and visit them. So people looking for events. Or maybe someone, maybe this, maybe someone that goes and hangs out at a place. 
all right, and sees a sign at the wall that says the, we need to give our band a, a name, the, the, the podiums. I looked down there and said, saw the podiums. All right, it's made up of a bunch of retired professors that love classic rock, all right? So the podiums are playing at the bar that I hang out at. Do I think I would enjoy going to that or should I just stay home and watch TV? All right, so people that have heard of event and want to get an, get an idea if you would want to, do I want to attend? Is that one of their songs? <laughs> I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Was that a ringtone or? Uh, no, I was. I okay. Sorry. All right. No, that's okay. That's okay. I always like. I always like when a phone goes off in class. Um, I play the little game of guess what student it is based on the ringtone. And I'm not very successful at it, you know, because you can't really you can't really pigeonhole people that way. But it's always kind of fun, like. I wonder who would have that as a ringtone. I had, uh, or, or my ex-wife had a teacher that every time someone's phone or whatever went off, that they gave a quiz to the class. So, I, my phone has gone off in class accidentally. I've like left the volume on, you know, accidentally forgetting. And I don't know what the penalty should be for a teacher if their phone goes off. So I don't have a penalty for students either. So that's okay. It happens. It happens to me. It happens to everyone. All right. So let's come up with personas. All right. Who is, and, and I think we can, we can, we can think of, of this in, you know, we could easily, looking at that list of stuff, we can come up with three sort of general things. Number one, we can come up with someone that's the fan of the band. So one persona will be the fan of the band. Another one will be maybe a person that is looking for something to do. So they're not necessarily a fan of the band. Maybe they've heard about them. Maybe they frequent a place where they see the band is going to play at, and they think, is it going to be worth it for me to go? And there's another one that we didn't think of. People that <coughs> run venues and are planning on booking shows. That would be another persona. So, let's give some names to these people. All right, fan of the band. What would be a good name for a classic rock fan? Donald. <laughs> and I swear to God, I did not pick that either for Don Huffman or Donald Trump. I wanted a name with an O, so I could put the umlaut over the two O, over the O. Because that's sort of a metal thing to do. All right? So what's Donald look like? I don't know. Donald has, wears sunglasses and has a long ponytail and a big bushy beard. So maybe you'd find a picture that looked like that. All right? His slogan is Free Bird. All right? And then you'd, 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 you, could, you could make up a little narrative about them. You know, this person, is, you know, this person has seen the band a half dozen times, enjoys their set, always looking for a night out, and, and wants to know where they're going to play, and enjoys it so much that might be willing to buy a CD uh, of their work. Looking for some, someone to do... Um, <laughs> I don't know why we're laughing, if we're going to test my art skills or what, but... Um, no, it's just a word slip. Okay. 
Oh. We'll draw this. Um, this is Jake. Jake just turned 21. And he's a college student in the area. And he heard this bar is playing at his local, at a local bar. Now we know that that's probably made up, right? Because if Jake just turned 21, he probably just wants to go out and have a beer. He probably doesn't care who's playing. But <laughs> we could make these more realistic if we wanted to. And then finally, run the venue. Uh, I don't know. Um, Charles. And he has a place that's, that, that has about 125 people capacity. His customers are sort of blue collar folks, salt of the earth folks. And he's always looking for new bands to come in because people are complaining that he keeps having the same two or three bands and he wants to bring some new talent in. So those are three personas. Now, we just came up with three and I pick three sort of arbitrarily for your project. How many of them do you do? Well, I guess it depends on how big your project is. Something like the, a website for a college, there's going to be a whole bunch of different types of personas, right? High school students, displaced workers, uh, people that are looking for just personal enrichment. They're not even seeking a degree, but they just want to explore one of their interests. Um, people looking for employment. There'll be a whole bunch for that. But for your assignment, since we're doing a small one, I want you to think of three. And again, the full nine yards like this. Get a picture, give them a name, and write a little bit about each one of them. From that, you should be able to come up with the goals of the visitors. So, you really probably could come up with several goals for each of these. But one of the goals that you might have is someone wants to find out or wants to, uh, you know, follow the band. Another person might want to find out if that'd be a good band. or the club that they own. And finally, find out if they are worth the $6 cover charge. These might all be different goals of different people. Follow the band sort of relates to the fan. Are they worth the $6 cover charge is sort of re related to the the person is looking for something to do. Um, are they a good band for my club? Sort of relates to the person that's booking shows for their club. Now, you can come up with more than these three goals, but again, for our assignment, for the project, I want you to come up with three goals for the visitors. Now, notice that none of these goals relate to specifically the website, right? These are goals, these are things that people always have wanted to do with a band, right? Before there was an internet. Where is this? Before there was an internet, bands wanted to sell their CDs or vinyl records or 78s or wax cylinders or <laughs> whatever they had before that, right? Eight, tracks. Eight tracks, yeah. People wanted to get new fans. People, bands wanted to get booked in clubs. And bands wanted to support their current fans. So this does have nothing to do with the web. All right? These are goals that organizations have that they've always wanted to have 
that they're now incorporating their website as part of their strategy to solve those goals. So what I don't want to see under goals are things like a goal is to have a site that has a good navigation. No. You're not making the site so that people will come and admire your navigation and leave the site saying, wow. I have no idea if I want to go see this band or not, but they have the most amazing navigation I've ever seen. All right? So that's not a goal. In the sense of that's not a goal that we're going to put as part of our strategy. That's not why we are making the site. So the goals in here are why we are making the site. Or make the site user friendly or make the site um, have such and such color scheme or whatever. All those things are not, they don't come into the thought, thought process at this point. All right, there's something for, you know, there's something to push until later. This is getting very fundamental and very basic, like why are we even making this website, right? Um, an organization shouldn't make a website just to have a website, right? They should make a website with some purpose in mind. And they also need to consider the purpose of the people visiting the website. And again, people visiting the website yeah, they want the navigation to be clear, but that's not why they're visiting the site. That's not their goal. That's not what they hope to achieve. So that's the strategy section. Now I spent more time talking about this one than I talk about than I will talk about any of the other ones. Because it really is the foundation. It gets you moving in the right direction. Nothing is worse from anyone's viewpoint. And this relates to all sorts of software, not just web development. But when software developers come up with a solution to a problem and then later on discover that they solved the wrong problem. All right. Um, for example, I worked on K Jewelers website a long time ago. All right. Um, they decided not to allow for online purchases on their site. Now, why do you think they did that? Well, maybe their sales staff with commissions and all that. Maybe they work on commissions. That might have something to do with it. Any other reason that you might think of? They want you to come into the store. And why do they want you to come into the store? To see stuff, right. Because very few people are going to say, going to click on a picture on the web and say, that's a beautiful diamond ring. I'm going to spend $5,000 for it, right? You know, if you're going to spend that kind of money, you are going to want to go into the store. So they correctly identified that it's not the goal of someone visiting an online jewelry site to purchase things. The goal is to get them interested to come into the store. And then once they get into the store, they can actually see the stuff. Because again, if I were buying an engagement ring, I would not buy it online. I would need to see it and look at it and decide if it was the right one or not. So that's a case of they correctly identified the correct problem to solve. They, they understood the goals of the people visiting their site. That the goal of, for visiting K Jeweler's website is not to purchase something right then and there, but to get sort of a sample of what is available so that you can decide if you want to come in and, and, and see it in person. All right. So it's important to identify the goals first. The second page is called the scope, also known as the requirements. Let's look at some of these goals. We have the goals for the organization, we have the goals for the people. We could achieve these goals any number of different ways. One of the goals was to find out if the band is worth the $6 cover charge. 
what are some pieces of content that we could put on the site that would help someone make that decision? Samples of the music. I'll just say audio samples of the music. What else could possibly do it? Video samples. Video samples. Anything else that might do it? Info about the ban. For example, what songs they play. Anything else? Where, yeah, where else they've played? <coughs> I'm not sure if that's what you meant, but I'm, I'm putting it down anyhow. Info about the venue, like, for me, do they serve food? Yeah, that's always a consideration, right? If, if I have a choice between going to two, to two clubs, and one serves food, one of them doesn't, I don't really have to think a lot harder, right? <laughs> Unless there's like a Beatles reunion at the other one or something, you know? Um, I could, we can brainstorm and come up with a list of other things. We could put reviews, maybe. You know, reviews like, for example, if there was a blurb in Scene Magazine that said, we saw the podiums last night at, at uh, the Grog Shop and they really were very entertaining. Depending on the band, possibly photographs or images, photographs of people having a good time, at their concerts. Some bands are definitely more visual than others, you know. I mean, if it's three guys just sitting on stools in flannel shirt, then maybe a video wouldn't really matter much. Maybe just the audio would matter. But if it was a very dynamic band that really had great stage presence and so on, maybe a video would be more beneficial uh, to that. All right. Now, are we going to do all of these things? Probably not. Maybe, maybe not. We're probably going to select because there's a lot of alternatives for satisfying any of these goals. I just picked the one goal. We could pick any of these other goals and come up with other lists of things that we could do. But you know what? The more stuff that you put on a web page, if you're not very careful, you're liable to distract people. If you have a page with a hundred, I'm sorry, if you have a, a site with a hundred different pages on it, there's a chance that you might distract people and they're never going to find the stuff that's really going to work for them. So, you would decide which of the things that you're going to put on the site to satisfy these goals. So the goals are what you want to achieve. What you want to achieve and what your visitors are going uh, want to achieve. The requirements are the stuff that you're putting on the site that's going to help satisfy those goals. And in my mind, this is a key component about design. When people talk about web design, they usually talk about, well, what font am I going to use? What colors am I going to, am I going to use? And so on. And that's important. Don't get me wrong. However, it's just as important deciding how we are going to satisfy the goals and what we're going to put on the site and what we're going to omit because we don't want to bombard the viewer with too much stuff. So maybe we decide, for example, that, hey, our band is very visually oriented. You know, the, the lead singer has great dance moves and people really have a party atmosphere and they're going crazy in the audience and all that. So maybe we put a video, all right? Maybe they got a really good review um, from Scene Magazine or The Plain Dealer, so we put that. We pick two or three things that we're going to pick. We pick enough that is, again, not overkill, but we really satisfy the goal. 
And we do that for every single one of these goals. When we're done, we have a list of, for our six goals, we have a list of maybe, you know, 15, 20, 12, somewhere in that range, requirements, the stuff that we're going to do to satisfy those goals. Um, and again, we can think for all these goals. For someone finding out if they're going to be a good band to book, all right, maybe contact information. If you want to book us, call us here. A lot of bands that I go to the site, they'll have their EPK, or electronic press kit, that will include things like publicity photos, right, and, and so on. So, for example, if I was uh, uh, someone running a club, if I could go to their website and print out photos that I could display in my club, and say they're coming here April 15th or whatever, you know, that would really you know, that, that would be a sign to me that that band was very professional, you know. If I saw that they had played at a bunch of different clubs around town, that may also give me the idea that the band is professional, especially if I knew one of the other club owners. I could give them a call and say, hey, I, I saw such and such band, I saw the Podiums played your band last September. How were they? How do people like them? You know, and so on. So you decide what content you're going to have to satisfy these goals. And it's not necessarily a one-to-one, -one, right? A video that you put on your site might help someone trying to decide if they're worth the cover charge. It might also help the booker to decide, do I want to book this band? Do they look like they're a band that my customers would like? And even my current fans might enjoy seeing a video of, of a performance. All right. So every requirement that you put could satisfy a bunch of goals. Likewise, every goal that you have, you could put another piece of, you know, several pieces of content, several requirements to satisfy that goal. So it's not necessarily a one-to-one. -one, but a couple things should be sure. For every goal you have, there should be at least one requirement that satisfies that goal. Right? If I define something as the most important goal, is one of the most important goals, and I don't put anything on my site to help satisfy that, I miss the boat, right? If I've identified that I have some loyal fans that want to follow the band, but I haven't put anything on the site that lets them do that, then I haven't done a good job. Likewise, everything I put should relate to one of those goals. Otherwise, why do you need it? You know, um, a video of the lead guitarist taking his first guitar lesson when he was eight, right? Does that satisfy any of the goals? Well, I don't know. Probably not. Maybe there'd be some hardcore fans that would like to see that. But, you know, Maybe if they were a big time band, you'd get that. But a local band, I don't really know if I'm going to be that interested. So don't put it on the site then. It doesn't relate to one of the goals, at least one of the goals. So goals are the things we want to achieve. Requirements are the things that we're putting on the site, the content that we're putting on the site that is going to help us achieve those goals. Six goals, you know, Three of the, for the organization, three for the visitors, and then 12, 15 or so requirements that help satisfy those goals. So notice at this point we have talked entirely about the content of the site. We haven't talked anything about the appearance of the site, how, how the pages are going to be laid out, and so on. All right, why is that? Was well, one of the first things we said. Content is queen, content is king. Content rules the web world, all right? Our design needs to support the content. Just like the demonstration that I showed with the eraser and the stapler or whatever I, I used, all right? Not eraser, um, markers and the, the stapler. So, that's two of the phases. 
Believe it or not, we may be able to cover the last three phases in the nine minutes that we have left. All right. The next phase is what's called the structure phase. And that is where we decide how we're going to break this content down into web pages. And we draw a little structure chart. Now, these 12 or 15 or so requirements that we have, each one of them is not going to get their own page. Right? That would be overkill. By the same token, we're not going to have everything on one giant page. So we're going to decide how we want to organize our site. Maybe we have a home page. We have a video page. We have a calendar page. We have an About Us page. We have a, I made that, I'm drawing too big. Home page. Then we have videos, calendar, About Us. Merchandise. Reviews. Maybe that's how we set up the structure. Another word for this is sometimes used as a site map. We develop how we're going to organize the content into these pages. Now, is this the only way we could organize the pages we have? Of course not. We could come up with a whole bunch of different things. We could have a home page. Have a page about each of the members. All right. And then so on. We could further divide it. We have to decide for the particular content and the particular situation we're dealing with, um, what's the best organization. Now, a boy band, One Direction, all right, might organize by the members, right? Because each of their, their fans usually have one member that they like best. The only member I even remotely know is there's someone named Zane that left the band. And I don't know how I know that. Uh, I probably saw that on Facebook one day or something. Well, the whole band officially split up. They're all doing solo acts. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you got you to remember, um, I'm happy when I'm within, say, five to, to eight years of pop cultural trends. So if it, ha if it happened between, say, um, 2011 and 2008, it's like new to me. All right, so I think they were within that time frame, so um, uh, I feel I'm kind of on the ball for that. But at any rate, um, you might do that for some band if that was their appeal, whereas with other bands, it wouldn't make sense to do that. All right. Um, the point is, is that there are a bunch of different ways that you can organize your page. And these are called organizing principles. And we talked a little bit about this when we talked about a college's website, where there might be a, site, a, a, a section for current students, a section for prospective students, a section for faculty and staff. We talked about it when we talked about a sporting goods store, right? There could be a winter sports, summer sports page. And then under winter sports there could be skiing, hockey, ice skating. Underneath summer there could be softball, volleyball, and swimming. All right. Or we talked about it could be split up in clothing, equipment, and apparel. Wait a minute, apparel and clothing are the same thing. Clothing, equipment, and shoes, let's say. 
So we could, we could split up any topic any number of ways. Part of the design process, again, is making the choice. Just like we made the choice of what requirements were the best for our particular situation, we look at our personas, we look at how they would probably think about the questions um, and decide based on that how we're going to organize our page or our pages into different things. And we actually draw a structure chart like this. Now again, there's all kinds of different ways and it can go multiple levels depending on how big it is. Under merch, maybe there would be CDs, T-shirts, or whatever. All right? Again, depending on how big it is. So it doesn't all have to be underneath the home page. It can be sort of going down a couple levels. All right? But again, as with every part of this design process, you consider the alternatives and decide what's best for your particular problem. That's really what the design process is. All right. You're skeptical that I'm going to finish in time, but I will, even though I only have two minutes left. The next to last step is the skeleton phase. And no, this doesn't have anything to do with the Grateful Dead or anything, given that we were talking about a classic rock band. But in the skeleton page, we decide how our pages are in general going to be laid out. And again, for smaller web pages, this might be an example of a skeleton of a web page. We have a header, we have a navigation, we have content, and we have a footer section. Question? Are you, oh, okay. I, I, th I thought you were. I thought you were raising your hand. Now that's not the only choice we can have. We could, for example. You know, if we look at a site, or not, we could have something like this, where maybe there is a header there's a main navigation over here. There's a sub-navigation over here. There's a content here. There's special news stories here. And there's a footer down here. Now, not every page needs to have the exact same layout. These are called wireframes, by the way, because they're just a sketch of the basic layout. All right? Not every page needs the same wireframe, but you probably don't need a separate wireframe for every one of your pages. Maybe, for example, your home page looks different than the rest of the pages. Maybe you have a couple of, of like gallery pages that look a little bit different. But the idea is, is that you're probably going to have one or two layouts that your pages are all going to conform to. And that's what you develop in the skeleton phase of this. You sketch out how your pages are going to be uh, out. You might have one or two for a project the size that you're going to do. If you have more than two, uh, think about it and talk to me because you're probably um, overthinking it or doing more work. Last but not least is the prototype phase. And the prototype phase is where you actually start making rough drafts of your web pages. In other words, what we've been doing since the start of the semester. All right. Our next step is going to talk about how we can make these wireframes using CSS. Because right now, we don't know, we haven't covered in class how we can make a, a web page laid out that way. You know, we've talked a little bit about CSS, but we haven't um, gone into that much detail. So that will be our next step, bringing these wireframes to life. And we'll pick up on that on Thursday. So I lied a little bit. We really didn't talk about the prototype too much except to explain what it is. We'll talk more about that on Thursday and plus I went two minutes long. So we'll see you up in lab.
Yeah, I was I was getting warm. 